This happened at the end of March 2017. And to this day, I still can't stay at home alone. Three years ago, before my grandparents passed away, moved into the house that left me. Located in a remote town in the United States, I spent some time decorating, and I happily moved in. My grandparents converted the top floor of their house into small apartments, and they rented it out to students. After I moved in, the cousin who decided to let me encounter some personal problems moved to the roof. My fianc and I live on the first and second floors. We live in a small town, just like any other town. Everyone basically knows each other. My fiancé, like most of the men in town, he was a fisherman. During the winter, you will be away from home for a long time. Some years are not available from January to May. We have a pair of brothers in our town. I guess I can call them weirdos. Some people say they're weird. But we all know that. They've had some bad experiences in the past. So maybe because of this. That's why they're acting weird. But I've never had anything to do with them in my life. I've never spoken to them either. I think it's mainly because of the age difference. I was home alone that night. My fianc went fishing up north. My cousin went to visit his family. I come home from work very late. I was sitting in front of the TV drinking and relaxing. I don't remember what was on TV. Usually, I just want to clear my mind after work. So I just sat there. Except for the light of the TV, the house was pitch black. After a day of work, I just want to sit there in a daze. Just then, I think I heard some movement outside. Usually when you hear the sound, I won't care because I live in an old house. And old houses sometimes just make sounds. Besides, it's raining a lot outside. So when you hear this movement, only once is there really someone out there. And that time, it's a bunch of Eastern Europeans spying on our house. This group likes to go to small places to find things. Commit minor crimes. I know there is such a thing. But I wasn't home yet. Only my fianc and cousin are at home. They got out. And they just jumped in the car and left. And we never saw them again. So I think that voice I just heard. Or it was sent by the house. Or the sound of rain. Until I heard it again. Much clearer this time. And this time. It comes through the terrace on the side of the house. Hear footsteps getting closer and closer to the window where I am. I'm stunned. This guy is coming across the house. Will pass by my bedroom window. What's inside? He can't see anything. Curtains are drawn and the lights were off. Footsteps keep coming towards the side door of the house. I know that once they get there, you can directly put on my window and see me. I quickly turned off the TV. Make sure the room is dark. That's the equivalent of telling them I'm home. Unless they came from the forest behind the house. However, this means that they, you have to climb a lot and they are only on the front of the house to see if the TV is on. Let me introduce you to the structure of my house. The house has two windows from the front. You can see the kitchen. There is a window that looks into the living room. Go around to the back of the house with bathroom. The bedroom window and the door leading to the living room. My cousin rushed out of the room. Headed straight for the door. Although he is not particularly strong, but he had a lot of courage for that man's behavior. He was acting very angry. He started yelling at the man, tell him to go away, said to call the police. The man tried to say, I'm unarmed. On one side of the living room are several large windows. I won't hurt you. Don't be afraid. My cousin shouted angrily. It's AM. You leave me quickly. Otherwise, I'll call the police. 
Is there something wrong with you? So the man raised his hands and stepped back, and he left, and we didn't go back to sleep. Instead, I called my aunt. On the other side is the entrance to the corridor. He called the condo manager again. And the next day, I came home from work. The man's parents are packing. Move boxes from his house to the car. I thought about it for a long time and didn't understand it. What was that man trying to do that night? Fortunately, my cousin was at home that night. Otherwise, I can't imagine. What will happen? 911, what is your emergency? We are on the first floor. There's a crazy woman in my bathroom. Where are you right now? Are you hiding? I hide in my room first. I'm so scared. Hurry up and send the police over and take him away. Is your door locked? Yes, it's done. Okay, don't worry. What's your name, please? There's also a terrace. What's your address? My name is Subway Master Zhao Li. Certainly, Mr. Li. The police are already on their way. Please keep on the phone with me. Is that woman still in your bathroom? Yes. How did you find out she was there? I was sleeping then. Suddenly, I heard a noise from the bathroom. I'll get up and check it out. And I just sat there. I didn't expect it. This woman actually shook it inside with a pair of scissors. What was he doing there? He couldn't talk to himself. Cutting my towel with scissors. Still laughing there from time to time. So did he notice you were outside? No, I saw him through the crack in the door. Have you seen this woman before? I don't know him. Heart is beating fast. I also saw him for the first time tonight. He was outside the window. But now he's suddenly blowing in my bathroom. What is he doing outside the window? Hope I come back from get off work. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. I got up and went to check the door. But when I opened the door, I found no one there. So what happened? In fact, similar things happen. Hear footsteps. But are we getting a knock on the door? But the doorman saw nothing. Sometimes there is a noise outside the house. I thought it might be a prank from the neighborhood kids. Or small animals playing outside. So I never thought about it. Someone is deliberately doing things outside. And I went back to the couch. But not long after. There was a noise from the window. As you get closer and closer to the door. Did you go over and have a look? Yeah, I've always been curious. What the hell is going on outside? It's just that every time I look at it, I get nothing. But this time, I see me. What do you see? I went to the window. Without even opening the window. A woman smiled at me with her head rising out of the boat. I can't breathe. It really scared me to death at that time. Could you describe what he was wearing and what he looked like? He was wearing a very tattered dress. When the weight of the person is pressed up, the wooden floor of the terrace will make a sound. Just then, I saw the shadow of a tall man standing outside the window. Pause and look inside. I sat in the chair and didn't move. I hope it's dark enough so he can't see me when he moves again. I took a deep breath. I could hear him crashing into my outdoor furniture and then it stops. Maybe it was too dark for him to see. I was struggling. Do you want to go over and turn on the patio light? But I didn't want him to know I saw him. I'm afraid this man will do something unknown. I live in a small town. There are very few security problems. Until this happened, I've always felt safe at home alone. Maybe someone is playing a prank on me. I thought I was funny, but I don't want to take the risk. I grabbed the phone. Run to the kitchen as fast as you can and hid under the open platform. I know where I am now. If you sit still, he can't see me from any window. I started dialing my dad's number quickly. Think. Only he or my brother can come and help me quickly. Because we share the police force with the town next door. The police are usually stationed in the next town. So if they come over, it will take at least 35 minutes. Although it was very late, my dad got through pretty quickly. Because he knows. If it's not important,
I wouldn't call him so late. I whispered quickly on the phone. Speak fast. And very low voice. My dad can't hear what I'm saying. So I repeated the room again. There is someone outside. He just looked in through the window. Just when I said it a second time. I can't hold back my tears anymore. Started to cry. My dad told me not to move. He'll be right over. And he hung up. I still remember. How I wish he wouldn't hang up. If he keeps talking to me, I would feel much safer. But it quickly dawned on me. Why did he hang up? I tried to call the bachelorat. Calls go directly to voicemail. I did it again. The result is still the same. I stared at my phone. Hope someone will call. And try to ignore the footsteps. I can hear you. The sound is getting closer and closer to the kitchen. Then there was silence. I held my breath and listened carefully. But I can only hear my own heartbeat. Did he jump off the patio? Went to the nearest place next to it. I waited for a while, then climb out, carefully peeking through a kitchen window. Watch me see him walk away slowly, head towards the driveway. Then stop and turn around. Standing at the window, looking at me. Is he smiling? I'm not sure. Because it's dark. The street lights weren't bright enough. I can't see clearly. But then I swear. He's just smiling at me. At the same time. A headlight lit up my driveway. He ran into his neighbor's driveway. Then disappeared behind the bushes. But before that. I saw that man. Then I realized whose car it was. And I jumped. It's my dad's business partner, John. I ran out the door and ran towards him. My dad called him. Let him come to my house. Because he's closer. I saw him. I was at peace. I immediately told him who I had seen. Then he jumped in the car and went after the man. The man I saw. That's what we all find strange. One of the brothers. You all know that. He's a schizophrenic. But why would he come outside my house? We don't know. He had a history of burglary. My dad's here. He called the police. The police came and took a statement for me. John is back. Said he didn't find the man. Maybe run to the neighbor. In the woods on the side of the house. The police have no evidence to arrest him yet because he didn't do anything, but they knew who it was. And promise or go talk to him. Tell him to stop being scary. The police also told me. If he does that again, let me call the police directly. That night, I didn't stay at home to see if he came back. I packed a few things. The night I spent at my parents' house. I didn't go home until my cousin came back two days later. Sad thing. And this is just the beginning. From that man lurking outside my house to now. It's been almost a week. I'm busy with work. I don't have time for anything else. But every time before going to bed. I can't help but think about it. That Friday after work. I'm going to call some friends over for something to eat. Play games. So I stopped at a store to buy something. When getting off, I can see someone out of the corner of my eye, mainly because this person is wearing bright red and pink clothes. That was remarkable. When I turned around and walked into the store, and I saw him, he is sitting on a bench. Look at me with a smirk. I felt it right then. An indescribable meaning. I walked into the store as fast as I could. Buy what you need then quickly got back to the car, before leaving the parking lot. I can't even find out where he is. He was carrying. His bicycle stood behind a building. Looking around the corner, when passing in front of him, our eyes met. Then I put my foot on the gas pedal and took off from there. That night, 
After the guests leave, I'm lying in bed, playing with my phone. Then I heard my cousin open the front door and come in. Lock the door and head upstairs to your room. That's when I knew he had gone home. I can sleep peacefully too. I was half asleep. I heard someone knocking on a living room window. My heart is beating really fast. And I froze. The sound quickly went from banging to banging. I think this person will soon break the window. Now. My first reaction was that the person was back. He saw me in the store. Now you're scaring me again. And then there was a knock on my bedroom window and knocked on him and shouted. Open the door. I know you're home. I was terrified. I can't even begin to describe how terrified I was. He repeated it again. Push the window with your hand at the same time. I slowly picked up my phone. I'm going to call my cousin. But at this time, my cousin texted me. Just pretend you're not there. He will leave. The text message said, and it dawned on me. The guy outside is coming for my cousin. This means that my cousin's at the local bar or met him somewhere else. The guy outside my window keeps knocking. He knocked on all my windows. Ring the doorbell for about 10 minus 15 minutes and it quieted down. I went to the kitchen, just saw him leave. When he went under the street lamp, I found out it was the brother of the last guy. The next day, my cousin said to me, he is the man whom he met at a party. They quarreled and that guy followed my cousin home. But I think he's lying. My cousin broke off, continued to make some improper transactions. He was a heavy smoker at that time. I guess he got it from that guy. Got some special cigarettes, but I don't want to give the full amount. What happened the next day makes me more certain of this conjecture. Because the afternoon, my cousin came back. Someone rang the doorbell and I opened the door. I opened it and found out who it was. Otherwise, I wouldn't have opened the door at all. That man is looking for my cousin. Said my cousin owed him something. I said my cousin lives upstairs. It has its own doorbell. I also know that my cousin just left, so I also told that person, before he leaves. I took a deep breath. Tell him in a very strong manner. It's wrong to knock on someone's window at night. It's not right to intimidate me either. However, he said to me that he was sorry, and he said he wouldn't do it again. Fast forward two weeks. I listen to music and run outside. Empty your head, except for the road ahead. I didn't pay much attention to what was next to me. Then I stopped to tie my shoelaces. When you get up. I saw the first night again. The man lurking in my house. He stood on top of a small slope, staring at me with his bicycle. I got up and I kept running. But this time when I turned my head to pay attention to him, I noticed that he was already approaching me. I chose one. I know there will be more people's routes, but it's a little longer. After changing direction, I look back again. He's getting closer. I pray in my heart. Hope to meet someone you know. Okay, stop and talk to them. Let that person go first. But ever since I found him right behind me, I didn't meet anyone. Then I saw a man walking his dog outside. So I stopped in front of them, said I thought his dog was cute. He also let me pet him. The guy passed me on his bike. But I could see him turning to look at me. During this period, he had that crazy smirk on his face the whole time. The man asked me. Did something happen? I'm afraid I'm thinking too much. Although I just say I'm fine. After. I can't see the stalker and his bike. But I still decided to run back. Adopt my original route. When you get home soon. I saw him at a bus stop. He leaned on his bicycle and looked down. Maybe looking at your phone. I crossed the street. I turned to see if he had noticed me. 
Then I thought. I should have been there before he found out. Down to home. But I went in. Locked the door right away. But while getting something to drink in the kitchen, I saw him riding a bicycle. Slowly cross my driveway, looking up at my house. Then disappeared behind a few trees. I went to take a shower. Then I'm ready to go online and relax. The first one I opened was Facebook. There are several new friend applications. I clicked on him. Guess who? That's right, that's him. How did he know my name? Or my Facebook account? And then I thought about it. We all live in a small town. So he doesn't have much time to know who I am. Maybe it was on my mailbox. However, I did not add him as a friend. When I go to work in a few days, I got a text message on my phone. It says someone wants to add me as a friend. I open the message. That's his name again. I clicked reject. In about a week, he's been trying to get in touch with me on his phone. Then I blocked. After what happened to him. And I came home one day and there was a note on the door. It says, friend me on Facebook. Signed by his last name and a fictional last name. I keep this note safe. Later following, when the behavior becomes a bit excessive, they handed him over to the police. During that time, his brother never came to my house again. But one time I went out while walking with friends. The two of them walked behind me together, keep staring at us. His brother also asked me once, Why don't you want to friend them on Facebook? And why I don't talk to their brothers? I never responded to any of them, and I finally got my cousin to talk to them, tell them to stop following me. And it got worse. At least one of them. Come every day. Their brothers have also been present where I am. Maybe three times or so, the first people started showing up outside my company. Jim, my house. It was literally everywhere I was. It got really bad. And I told a lot of people. They all told me to call the police. And I did call the police. I put that change. And the information on the phone to the police. Tell them about the tracking. And said I had witnesses. The police promised to keep an eye on the man for me said it wasn't the first time he had done this kind of thing. The stalking continued for another month. And feel. He seemed to enjoy the attention the police were giving him. Because right here in the police, when I told him not to do it. And he came back the same day. My fiant is finally back from his work. And one night, the two of us were having dinner at a restaurant. I told him about the stalking just about to leave when opening we saw the man standing outside the restaurant my fianc went straight out and walked towards him I didn't quite hear what they said but I heard my fianc say to this guy find a chance to break his leg after this all I saw was that guy following me about three times but I don't know if it's for this reason. Or did the man just finally give up? I just hope. Even when my fianc left to go to work. Can also maintain the state. Fortunately. After that, the two brothers never followed me again. This happened a few months ago. I'm a sophomore. I went home on vacation. I didn't have a good relationship with my stepmother. 
so I don't want to stay at my dad's house. They live in a remote town in the United States. The night I went back, I called a friend from high school. Ask if I can stay at his house. I saw on social media that he still lives in town. And I've stayed at his house before. So I know if they agree. There is a place for me to live. My friend, just call him drunk. He was a very ordinary man. Although we are not each other's best friends. But we were on good terms through high school. We occasionally text each other. When I go back to my hometown, we will hang out together, chat, and reminisce about being in the orchestra, or time spent together in English class. When I called, he seems very enthusiastic. Most often an optimistic person. He seems to be buying a new car recently. I didn't think much of it at the time. He said I could sleep in the guest room. So I went over. After arriving at his house, he was just as excited as he was on the phone. He made some suggestions, like watching weird movies or playing games. I was very tired when I came by car, but considering that we rarely meet, I don't think it's a big deal to strengthen the relationship. We played Smash Bros. And we talked for hours. The conversation took longer than I expected, but it was fun. It's getting late. Around 2 a.m. And he started asking weird questions. Like, have I ever thought about what it's like to kill someone? Or if it goes missing, will anyone remember me? In addition to that, and some pretty general questions. Like, do I have a boyfriend? How are my parents? Did you make any friends at school? That strikes me as a bit strange. I didn't realize until later. This might be evaluating whether you can do bad things to me. This strange feeling makes me just want to go back to my room and go to bed. We turned off the game and went downstairs. His room and guest room are there. We said goodnight to each other. I went back to my room to get ready for bed. I don't sleep well. I've been losing sleep for a while. So about an hour. Are still awake. Then I heard movement outside the door. The walls are thin. I can hear footsteps passing by my door. Went to the first floor. Then came down again soon. But here's the weird thing. I didn't hear the basement door open. Because that door crunches when it opens and the lights didn't come on, so I'm confused. I didn't know what I was doing. I heard him go back to his room, but I had a bad gut feeling since I saw him at night. I feel that he is very different from before, so I searched for him on social media, checked to see if there's anything out of the ordinary, but everything seems to be fine, straight, until I found one of his social media accounts this account number and found it on my Twitter contact list. His inactive account is bound. The content of his account is very disturbing. There are pictures of dismembered humans or animals. There are suspicious looking website links. It's about murder. Article. There are also photos of various weapons. After careful observation, I found out that these photos were taken in his bedroom. The last update was sent about a week ago. It's a piece of text. Said he hoped. Can find someone like a homeless person. So it's easy to kill him. I immediately went into a panic. I knew he was going to do something to me. He must have gone up and locked the door. I quietly packed my things. And I open up this bedroom. A small window high in the wall. Start to climb out desperately. Just as I pulled my leg out, he opened the door. It's dark, but the street lamps are enough for me to see clearly. He took something slender and long. Maybe a knife. He didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I just turned around and jumped in the car. 
Drive as fast as you can to my dad's house. So I blocked him on all platforms and reported his account after calling the police. The police said, those walls are registered in his dad's name. They will collect as much evidence as possible of his crime. I also told my other high school friends, don't play with him. Since then, I'm scared every time I meet someone I don't know. I just realized, someone I know so well, deep within, but someone who could hurt me badly. It might even kill me. I found a diary. It's the one I just passed away. Schizophrenics right. His name is Roy Simmons. About three years ago, Roy was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Died a few weeks later. The reason why he published his diary. It's because I have a lot of things I don't understand. Although I am already at work with schizophrenics over 15 years, I hope someone here can help me figure it out. Roy's case. I have not made any changes to the following content. February 6, 2019, like one Simmons. He watches me sleep. I don't like this. I told everyone. But they all said that he exists only in my mind. He's not real. But I can see him. I can feel him. He knew he was real. I also know he is real. Sometimes he would chat with me. We usually have a nice chat. Nothing out of the ordinary. And he was walking around my room. Smile sometimes. Cry sometimes. But it didn't bother me. If I stay up too late, he will be angry. Then he would scream. It's getting louder. Until I somehow fell asleep. He still follows me during the day. Watch my every move. He smiles when he is satisfied with my actions. They scream when they're not happy. But he is so beautiful. Oh, it's really beautiful. He's with me right now. When I wrote these words. And he's looking right at me. Please help me. He likes it when I mention him. But he never told me his name. He said I needed his voice. I can always have him. But his voice is really nice. I don't think I've ever heard it so clear. A melodious voice. 190,306 please. Don't let him come near me. He keeps me safe. But recently, he's been unhappy with me. I don't know why. When I was sleeping, he would stand by my side and watch silently. Occasionally sing. I don't understand what's being sung. He said I had done something bad. I will be punished. I know he just wants the best for me. So I have nothing to worry about. He tried to kill me. He said I have the most beautiful eyes. The smoothest hair. He plays with my hair sometimes. He doesn't know that. But I know he can't see my eyes. He's telling me to stop writing. It's time to say goodbye. No, 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 no. He's getting closer. He'll catch you soon. About a month after writing these words, Roy is dead. What puzzles me is, he knew how he would die. And when will they die? He died on March 6, 2019. He appears to have been stabbed several times in the eye. Hair and part of scalp ripped off. But the autopsy report said he died of a heart attack in the surveillance video that day. No specific evidence was provided either. His behavior is completely normal. He died in the bathroom of his room. There's no surveillance. Roy couldn't have stabbed himself in the eye at the same time. Ripped his hair out again. Because there are no sharp objects in the bathroom. And Roy. I'm not the kind of person who would hurt himself like this. I hope you can provide some useful information. Last June, Ellen moved into the house I shared with him. 
I had a bad feeling at first. But then I thought, I must be too suspicious. He is new here. May feel awkward. Lonely. Especially in the United States when the stars are raging. After a while, Alan invited me to his room for a drink. I was thinking about being in my own home. Shouldn't happen. And if anything happens, I can also call other roommates for help. And initially, everything was great. But as he drank more and more, Alan started to lean towards me. Sitting very close to me. It makes me feel uncomfortable. He also made video calls to his brother. Expose me to the camera. Keep complimenting me on my appearance. I avoided his contact. But he didn't take the hint. But after many polite rejections, still holding my wrist, let me dance with him. Therefore, I left while Alan was on the toilet. I told my roommate downstairs what just happened. He told me to go back to my room. If Alan tries to break into my room, just tell him. But he also said I shouldn't go into Alan's room. Alan found me downstairs. Try to persuade me to go back. He asked me what I wanted. I told him politely. I wish he would leave. I don't know what he was thinking. He thought I would go back to his room, but I didn't. And he knocked on my door and called me three times. After this incident, I would feel embarrassed to be with Alan, so they usually avoid him until one time. He confronted me in the kitchen. That I snitched on the landlord was bad. Finally found. So-called small report is its person. Another unrelated thing the landlord said. I'm serious about telling Alan. Why do I feel uncomfortable? But it also explains that I didn't report him. Alan not only failed to apologize. He also talked about how many girlfriends he had in his life. What a wonderful man he is. Said I wasn't feeling well. It made him feel uncomfortable too. We ended the conversation politely, but then several times. In the case of my express refusal, he also forcibly hugged me. So I told him very clearly, I don't want to be friends with him anymore. Cross border to a few months later. Sophia moved into this house, just like me. He was friendly to Alan at first until his actions crossed the line. Over the next few months, several different roommates have complained. Alan is always noisy regardless of the occasion, smoking in the house, harassed and threatened others because we had a dispute. Alan thinks it must be me who reported him. And one day I was cooking dinner and he came up to me and he said, if you report me to the landlord again, I'll show you. What is a crazy man like? He also developed a habit. Just stand at my door. Tell Soffle about me. Call me a jerk. Idiot ugly, and so on. One day, Sophia sent me a recording. In the recording, Alan yells. Anyone who reports me will die. After this incident, Sophia and I both felt in danger. We shared our concerns with the landlord. Due to Alan's rent arrears and antisocial behavior, our landlord gave him an eviction interest. But due to the impact of COVID-19, he has six months to prepare for the move. And because of behavioral escalation, the duration of the residency order has also been shortened. Alan accused Sophia of banging on his wall yelling again in rooms and hallways a few hours said he was a witch said we'd all die miserably 
whoever tries to reason with him. He wouldn't even listen. The police recently arrested Alan, charged with stalking and harassing A. Women who do not live in this house, but he got out that night, still in gems. Period. Due to intimidation and antisocial behavior, we called the police several times. Alan himself for no reason. Made multiple calls to the police and emergency services. After they come, just yell at them. In addition to the things mentioned in the article, many other things related to Alan. For example, he tried to get a job in my company. For those of us involved, that's pretty clear. Alan has a mental illness, very delirious. He also seems to be an alcoholic because he is often drunk. Smell of alcohol. I go out to buy wine almost every day. Alan didn't take the police seriously either. His behavior after they came. No improvement. Alan next week should be expelled. But I know he won't leave voluntarily. It may take a while to let him go. I'm moving soon too, but I've been putting up with this shit for almost a year. I know most of his threats and other behaviors. It may just be naive. Way to vent emotions. But you can't tell. People like him want to maintain their fantasies. What's next? I was 25 years old. Stayed at my aunt's house for a short time. Auntie lives at home. My two cousins and I. He lives in a nice apartment. Lower floor of the building. The living room has many windows. He always leaves it on to keep the ventilation on, as well as allowing his cat to observe people outside. His house happens to be located on A, the corner of the overgrown courtyard path. When I first moved in, I noticed a man. He gave me an aura to stay away from him. My cousins and aunts said, he lives upstairs. Two houses away from us. His parents don't want to live with him. So I found him this house. Also paid the rent. My cousins and aunts also said, except to hear him mumble and say something strange. I didn't find any other problems with him. My aunt usually works the night shift. Leave at 3 a.m. My cousin also works at night. Out at 2 a.m. Or so. It's usually just me and my cousin who is the same age at home. Until about 8 in the morning. We also go out to work. Let me tell you a little bit about the layout. The living room to dining room of the house is an open plan design. My aunt used to have people come over for the night. So I put another sofa in the dining room. That's where I sleep. He slept on the sofa in the living room. My aunt never locks the door. Until this happened. One night at AM. I'm chatting on the phone with my friends with my eyes closed. Just then, I heard a man scream. He shouted, don't shoot. Banging on the neighbor's door on the right. And there lived two male college students. They told the guy he was in the wrong place. Let him go. He apologized. And walked away. I looked out the kitchen window. This window is directly facing my sofa bed. The strange neighbor saw me. Then grinned. Then... So he walked back to his house. Although I feel a little uneasy. But it didn't wake anyone else up. The next day, I took it as a joke. Tell your family about it. At night, I watched a movie with my cousin. Then I went to bed. I don't sleep well. This time when I woke up, I always feel like someone is watching me. I looked at my phone. It was about 3.30 in the morning. So I know it's not my aunt or cousin. I sat up, thinking of going to my aunt's sofa to watch TV. She had already left the house. 
in the living room, the feeling of being stared at. It got stronger. Then, I saw a dark figure standing quietly in the courtyard. Looking in, I'm petrified. Immediately, go back to your sofa and get your phone. During this period, that man is gone. I tried after hearing the man's weird voice. Try to calm yourself down. Thinking about whether to go and call my cousin up. But the man is by the kitchen window. You can see my cousin's door. So I got down on the floor and out of his sight and started frantically calling my cousin. This man is now doing it over and over again, saying the same thing. I won't hurt you. I'm not armed. He pressed his face against the glass window, then start talking. He wanted to touch the cat he saw through the window. I haven't been able to get through to my cousin. It's been 20 minutes. In this bad situation, I don't have a lot of options. I can jump up and run to get the knife. But in this case, I have to go into the kitchen. I can also try to respond to him. Let him go. But I do. If he suddenly gets angry with me, the result could be bad. Now I can hear him knocking on the door while repeating the nonsense. And I walk down the hallway, lie on the floor, do that kind of army serpentine march. I saw the doorknob turn just when I was about to jump. If you like this story, please click like. If you don't like this story, please click subscribe to the channel to watch the next videos. Thank you.